We come to you from 118 Tufdell Park Road. No, later, later. I haven't introduced you yet. We bring to you this live outside broadcast from 118 Tufdell Park Road. Making a coffee. Maxwell House. Hope you don't it's mind. It's a Thursday evening. We're in the home of Rachel and Steve Gibbons. We've just been out for a little bit of liquid refreshment, and Rachel is here making the coffee. Uh, from a jar one, one spoonful, House. one spoonful. I reckon one little teaspoonful. One spoonful so? per cup. But whether it should be no, heaped or not, I don't know. One teaspoon. What? Hooked. Should it be heaped? Heaped? I oh, know. I reckon <laughs> flat. They are big cups. <laughs> Hello, France. Hello, France. Hello, France. Hello, France. We're going to be following Rachel around her flat as she does little bit things. bit boring at the moment because I'm making coffee in the kitchen. It's going to take a little while, but I hope you bear with us for take a, a bit. Take yeah. heart. This, this is... It's a just while I'm going to carry on putting coffee in here, look like this, like this, for ages. You're in for the long ride. Then, You're in for the long more, ride, bit more okay? in there, a bit more, that's what I say, always. Right, this a bit more in there. Now, what you need for a cup of coffee this is isn't, a bit of this coffee, isn't a, five a bit of coffee. Minute. What you will notice is there bit are two of, conversations going on at once here. Can you can you Can you decode, can you decode two conversations at once? Uh, can you can you actually water, can you actually water, listen to what she's milk, saying to what I'm saying milk, to what's going on in the background? And, the and it looks like we're away. We're if you, away. If we're you can, if you can actually Does help. Somebody take milk. Somebody take milk. Who would you milk for? No, milk? I'm too busy trying you to don't talk. Want milk. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to talk to Mark. Steve. Oh God, right. Steve. She's now going next door to talk to Steve. Uh, you're in for the long ride here. It's going to be a long session. Sit back, earphones on, in privacy. Please, please don't let anybody else hear this. This is a behind-the-scenes look at what goes on in the Gibbons family on the Tuttle Park cabin. Myself and Paul came round and we visited Rachel and Steve. Paul was a lovely, lovely young man. Lovely. What do you, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? But why do you say that? Those why do you say Because you can't let him hear you, because no. otherwise he's ego. But you know? Rachel, Rachel. Go on. Mark, Mark rang me up this evening and he spoke to Paul. Oh, oh he's a very nice well, man. Very nice who, Mark? Mark, no. Mark's Mark. a bit of a uh, comsy comsy yeah. he's playing French. He's got done. ginger hair, though, hasn't he? Like carrot top. Carrot top, they call it. It's going to be passed on in the genes. Do you think you know? so? In the genes. It would be passed on. If they had if, children. No, if they passed the genes on. Talking about children. Let me it, just have a I little think it's talk only about children. I think it's only charitable <laughs> to pass your genes on. You know, it stopped, it stopped. No, it started again. <laughs> Right, we might have an intermittent connection. We think you lost a little bit there, so we're just going to rephrase. Hot water. Re. What's the word? Hot water. Rephrase. Re. Retract. I re think we'll retract. Re. What is that word? Re. Re. Absorb. Re. Rachel, your breasts. Please. Your breasts are every bit as big as they used to be. They are not. They I've grown are. taller. My breasts have shrunk. They're some. fucking enormous. They are not. They, Bob. S they stick out like there's no tomorrow. That's just uh, artistic license. That's what you're taking. Yeah. They stay very small and pert. Very, very small. Rachel is standing a, here there in her bare feet. Bare, not even bare stocking feet. Bare feet. And she's got a multi-layered dress on. Skirt. Black. Black well, skirt. Usually, I'll just like to know, I don't usually allow people over 40 in the kitchen. But you're lucky. You're oh, just I'm not lucky. over 40 inches. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Below 40 inches. But you might be able to, you might, you might, other people might believe you. All right. I don't. Okay, just to set the scene, hello France, hello France, <laughs> we are in the kitchen. Rachel Gibbons, as she is these days, has made four enormous jugs of coffee. <clears throat> you wouldn't believe how big they are. Her, her jugs, I mean, they're absolutely something. One of them, one of them looked a bit weak. She's Immature just, titter. <clears throat> Immature titter, hello France, get over that. We know humans a bit thin on the ground over there. <laughs> but have you seen Hello, Hello? That'll have you hooting. Um, yeah, one of the jugs was a bit weak on the coffee front, so oh, she just... Did Paul, want, did Paul want sugar? Can yeah. we rewind it and find out if Paul wanted sugar or not? He's a nice young man. He's a lovely young man. One, two, three, four. That should be much, much better. I can see my level now. That's really quite good. And uh, the only thing is it's probably only coming out on one side, but uh, there we go. Okay. Have you said hello to Mark and Catherine? Hello, Mark. Hello, Catherine. All right. Do you want a hand with your jugs? If you don't mind. Right. We're in the kitchen. We're now moving through. We're now moving through. I'm going to take another one in with you, Bob. So you have to put that under your chin. I can't take two. Put it under your chin. Put your clothes no. back on and put that under your chin. 
Mark needs us. Oh no! We can't leave Mark go. I can't. Look, Bob, if you spill that on the line, uh, I'm not right. going to forgive you. I'm picking up two enormous mm, jugs in one hand, tape recorder in the other. <laughs> We're moving from the kitchen. Give us a commentary, Rachel. Um, so moving spa- from the kitchen. So spacious, spacious. Is it a spacious kitchen? Huge. 14, 14 metres by 26 metres, the kitchen. It's the Tufnell Park kitchen. We're in the... Um, where are we now? Oh, no. I'm just where are we now? Oh, where are we? I've just checked over my foot. So I've just checked over my foot. Okay, and we're going to the living room. Where are we? Moving into the living room now. Bit of a long walk. In it's, you go. We're, right, we're, en- go. we're entering you the living room. down the very end of the living room, Bob. There's two men where in here. <laughs> Rachel, give us a guided tour of these men. Here you go. Uh, well, on this side, nearer, the nearer man. You're doing well. You're working Steve. well. You're working well. The nearer man is Steve, and he's nearer. Who, who, and is, the who, is, who is Steve? Who is Steve? Steve is the nearer man. And then you've got <laughs> Paul as the father man. The son of the, of the, father, the father. The father or the mother father figure. man. He's the fur, he is. further figure. He is the, he, the further figure. The and, further and Steve is the nearer. <laughs> These coffees the are figures. fucking hot. <laughs> take them from your hand. Paul, take them quick. They're burning my hand. Don't ask a stupid question, really. <laughs> Quite obviously. And at the moment, I'm, I'm rolling a split. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we now go over to see what. What, what is that you're doing? Is that this is a, a spliff. <laughs> what, what's a spliff? S p l i w. Can I can I just perch here next to you? Just 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 just, just, just for a moment. I'll show you um, what I'm doing here. Yep, yeah, right. Look, okay. He, now, these, hang on. Like we've got to set the scene. Hello, France. Hello, France. <laughs> Come in, France. What we've got. Bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> yes, thank you. We've got Mental. two. We've got three. No, we. Oh, you're d- so clever, you. Yeah. We had two Rizzler papers. We've now got three Rizzler papers with a load of tobacco in the middle. Um, Steve, I, su- I suggest to you that it's not only tobacco in that in those three Rizzler papers. No. Right. C'est le cannabis. <laughs> oh, dear, 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 dear. Love him. <laughs> Bless love him. Bless love him. Bless right. In the background, Rachel is on the floor, and she's she's lining up a little tape for our uh, delectation. Now, where's the other one? Now, Paul, can we can we introduce Paul to this proceedings? Hello, Paul. Hello, Mark. I spoke to you earlier on the bloody telephone today, didn't I? Today. Right. What what are you to do with this group here assembled this evening? How, how are you related in, in any way? God knows. <laughs> God knows. I don't really know. I'm just um. Yeah, but for Mark. Just to let Mark know. Friend of Rob's or Bob's or whatever you want to bloody call him. That's or... me. Yes, well, I so know. Why am I Is that you? <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> right. Now, fill her in, fill her in, fill her in. Rachel's no, on No, fill Mark in. Mark, Mark. We are about to watch Blind Date, starring... And Rachel is on Blind Date. Well, we'll send you a copy of it later on in the year. No, it's horrible. Put it back... Put it back, Put it back th- on. Very horrible. beginning. Put it back on. What's I'm this? No, right. Back. Just to set the scene. Hello, France. <laughs> Paul on the right. Doesn't. He's a bit out of it, really. We'll come back to him later. Ah! It. He's just hit me. Steve on the left, running a. I really, I really. I'm not. I just like to just, know that I'm just, not happy. He's just <laughs> making <laughs> making a big joint. It won't go between the five. Rachel That's is on the floor hell. talking incessantly oh. because she always did and always <laughs> does and always <laughs> will talk incessantly. I'm not cold, by the way. I'm quite sickly. Right, Mark. What I'm going to do with you is we're going to hand you over to Rachel and she and she will guide you no, through. No, I can't guide him through. I can't. Right. I can't Mark. Mark. You're Rachel. Going to guide him Rachel. Have to do it. Right. Oh, God. You're going to have to do it. Sorry. Come on. Here we go. Look, there, no. Come on. No. Oh, Paul. Paul. Yes. This is the commentator of the moment. <laughs> Needing to take a little break. We're watching Blind Date from the first series. The very first series. The first the first and series of nine, 19 what? 1990, 1980. Oh, 1984. <coughs> oh, right. Steve, Steve how would you say Scylla looks? How does Scylla look, bad, Steve? Bad. She looks bad, actually. Yeah, she looks kind of like droopy and kind of really... Sad. Ugly, sad. Ugly, bleached, sort of horrible, really. Mark, a little hint. Don't ever wear blue eye makeup. She looks like a bit of a Sharon, actually, didn't she? Anna Tracy. Yeah. E- even her, yeah, even her ginger cool. hair isn't very ginger. It's like no, it's, um, grey and shallow, and she looks flobby and flappy. And there was a rumour about this time that she had breast cancer and was going to die, but unfortunately she didn't. <laughs> Mark, I hope you didn't hear that. <laughs> right, Paul, give us a commentary. On what? 
What do you want to comment down? Don't, don't bend it about too much because it stops earlier when I bent it around. Oh, right. Right. Right, there's three men just... Look at the fucking choices I had! Your three men... Your three men on the television. Uh, let's have a look at number one. Number one is, is okay. okay number one... No. Number one's in leather. No. Number one's in leather. He looks a bit... He's got leather trousers. Well, at the moment, Scylla is meeting the blokes. Leather trousers, no. lively top, <coughs> not bad looking. Bloody horrendous, if I'd say so. Not Paul, nice, so what's Paul. That? Yes. Spiky grease cap. Paul, yes. He's not bad looking. No, he's not. Oh, Paul, yes, he's, Rod. He's quite oh, nice looking. Oh, Rachel just yeah. hit the cat on the head, evil woman. Poor cat's got brain damage Paul, now. he's got a nice... Why? <laughs> this guy on the bloody television. No, I didn't fancy me. That was a bit of a Who problem. did you go for? I'm not telling you, I guess. Oh, bloody hell. Right. But it is number three. The one I'd, that I'd have said number one. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's number three. Yes, no, exactly. Really? It was nearly number three. I couldn't. I was so. Yeah, you did go for that long haired gig, did you? It was a bit of a sad choice. It was Jamie number two. I bet she went for Scylla personally. <laughs> you should have gone for number one. I wouldn't have. Well, that's because. Looks like he's just got out of the shower. He's a Yes, I know he's below 50, so he wouldn't be your sort. Ah! Just be careful, yeah. Was that it's the one? Newcastle. Is that right? We're on to number two. Is that number the one Rachel two. had it off with? Jamie. Jamie from Newcastle. You have to guess. It's even more uglier. Uh, I don't think. I don't think it is a guess anymore, is it, Rachel? There's your ashtray. I reckon she went for number three personally. I no, think she's a bit she feeling didn't. a bit desperate. Okay, you're a sad man. I'm sorry, number three is <laughs> number three has got a short hair and a moustache. He, he looks like thin him. and boring. Oh, bloody hell, he looks a right clone, what? doesn't he? He looks like what? he looks a bit. Um, there you go. Right. 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 He looks a bit like a terrible. Right, Mark. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Hello, France. Hello, France. Hello, France. Hello, France. Easy for us to forget that you're there, but you are still with us. Peak time viewing and peak time listening, and it's costing us a fortune to beam this. He is horrible. Can you shut up while I'm on air? I'm on air, all right? Shut up. I could have chosen him. Shut up while I'm transmitting to France. But turn the telly up before near it. Hello, France. Hello, France. Coming through now. Bonjour. We're handing you now to Rachel Gibbons. Here is Rachel to talk to you direct. Direct to France. Rachel Gibbons, round of applause. Yes. Bonjour, Francaise. Oh, no. Right, right. We're watch- ah, no. It's horror, horror, horror. Rachel's just come on the telly. It's blind date. Paul, 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 Paul. First reactions, first reactions. What do you reckon? Beautiful. She's in a golden top. Golden top. Big, big, thick necklace. Any minute now, I'm going to start laughing on my chest when I hear Hair all bubbly and curly. Can, can we just rewind that bit for Mark? Yeah, she's right. Right. I'm a, I'm a oh, right. Don't despair. Don't despair. Right. Rewind. Right. We're going to rewind this for you, Mark. Just from you coming in and Scylla talking to you. Oh right. no! I just no. I don't. Oh God. You're looking. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. No. Before the intro. We want. No. We want the intro. Right. Hello, France. Hello, France. Listen. Listen here. From hiding. Right, we, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to hear that again. Right. <laughs> Hello, France. Hello, France. Well, now the girl is going to choose one of them, and she is Rachel Model from Highgate here in London. Come in, Rachel. Where are you, love? <laughs> Rachel. Well, I hear you're a student, aren't you? Yeah. And you're studying. What are you studying at the moment? A levels. Oh, oh, some more. I'm well, again. <laughs> How many A levels have you got? No, I've got two. No, no. And what are they? Oh, I'm from the Oh, she's a very clever girl, this Rachel. <laughs> but Rachel, you're looking for. What are you looking for in your ideal mate? Shut up. You would be. Oh, I don't know. Just. See what see what I end up with. Perfectly <laughs> happy. Well, there's three lovely chaps on the other side of those screens, and you know you've got three questions to ask each of them. Yep. So do you want to fire away with your first question? Okie dokie. 
Number one, right? I'm, I'm slightly unconventional, and I really go for men of the Woody Allen type. <laughs> Ideal. <laughs> well, um, to be honest, I think I'm more like Woody Woodpecker than Woody Allen. <laughs> and why's that? Well, we're birds of a feather. We've both got similar hairstyles, to be honest. <laughs> okay, number two. How do you measure up to Woody Allen? Well, I'm a bit taller than number one. Um, I'm Woody Allen. Um, I grow hair on the top of my head rather than grow my hair through my head, my head through my hair rather. <laughs> 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 what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> you did? Oh, sorry. Well, you, well you're studying A-levels and man. <laughs> Number three, do you resemble Woody Allen? I think I'm a lot taller and quite a bit better looking than Woody. So. <laughs> We've got a similar warped sense of humour, and I shouldn't say too much because I hear he speaks very highly of me. <laughs> He's got no taste, he likes Mel Street. <laughs> um, my favourite day of the week is Sunday because mm. it's a nice, restful day. Number one, what's your idea of a really enjoyable Sunday afternoon? Well, apart from doing the hair, I think my. <laughs> My ideal Sunday afternoon, I think, would be in an oxygen tent, recovering after a Saturday night with both Eric. <laughs> Number two. If I wasn't working. Uh, if you uh, weren't working, if you had it. Well, I would like to take you up to. <laughs> I'd like to take you up to my castle in Scotland just for the day, you know. <laughs> If the weather wasn't too bad, we could watch a, a Woody Allen film, film or something. Like that. <laughs> three. <laughs> what about one less now? Number three. What do you think? How do you spend your Sunday afternoon? Well, I'd like to come around and pick you up in my open-top sports car, and um, we have the hamper loaded in the back, and we just go spend the day in the country. I think a nice day. Okay, number one. Again, <laughs> what uh, were you most afraid I was going to ask you? The question I was most afraid you were going to ask me is probably the one you've just asked me. <laughs> but apart from that, I think the question I'd most dread you asking would be something like, can you lend me 50 pounds? Ah, and how would you have answered that? Um, well, I haven't got 50 pounds, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> he spent it on his head. <laughs> two. What was the question you were most afraid I was going to ask you? Where would I take you for the day in my Ferrari? <laughs> because I haven't got a Ferrari in B because I can't drive. And number three, the same question. Well, I think um, due to contractual obligations, I was a bit worried you might ask me to sing. <laughs> sense of humour, hasn't it? It's decision time now, Rachel. But before you make up your mind, don't choose yet. We're going to get a little reminder of what those lads said beyond those screens. Well, would you choose number one, who's got a Woody Woodpecker hairstyle and hopes you won't ask to borrow money? Or number two, who doesn't have a Ferrari, but he'd take you to his castle in Scotland to watch movies? Or number three, who tries to serenade you in the country on a Sunday afternoon? The decision is yours. Rachel, it's a big moment. Who are you going to choose? Um, I think I'll choose number one because of his humour. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you like him. He actually is absolutely wonderful. Be before you meet him, I'd like... <laughs> to meet the two guys that you turned down and first of all you turned down number two and his name is Jamie Rothwell and he's from Newcastle. Come in Jamie. And Rachel you also 
also turned down number three, and that was Ian Curry, and he's from Lewisham. <laughs> Rachel, the big moment has arrived. <laughs> Have a ball wherever you go on your away day. You are going to have a smashing time because you chose number one, and his name is Ken Blasburn, and he's from Nottingham. Nurse, the screen, please. she chose you because you're everybody's favourite in the audience, wasn't he, ladies? Yeah. You're going to have a super time, Rachel. He might let you do his earth. <laughs> now, <laughs> yes, you've got to choose now where you go you're going to on your away day. And they are, Rachel. Any card at all? No. That one. Open the door. We're all dying to know where you're going. A trip to New York. Yeah. <laughs> before Rachel. Nowhere near America. Really? You looking forward to it? What about you? I've never been to York, York, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can have a ball. Oh, I'd love you to take you along as ex ex oh, will do. <laughs> <laughs> you you will do. I'd love to. I really actually if I don't go with you, which I know I won't because I've got to be here, would would you come back next week and tell us all about your trip? Yeah. Please. Yeah. Oh thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Fortnight later, it started. Mark. Right, Mark, that was um, that was the episode. And um, Paul, what do you think? Very good. She's very brave. She looked very all right. It wasn't the first ever blind date, but it was from the first series. Yes. The third one ever. The third one ever. The third blonde. black looked bloody ridiculous. She did. Her, her, blo her ginger hair was very pale. Ginger. <coughs> Um, right. What do you? This is my mate. That, that ends up getting a trip to New York as well. All right. Oh, Who's your mate? Picking on the this guy half. here. Who's picking on the second half? He was one of your rowing club mates. Yeah, he was one of my, my best friend at the time. Right. Steve has now gone out for a piss. Uh, at the moment, myself, Rachel, and Paul were just sitting round. Rachel's trying to find the bit on the video. Hello, France. Hello, France. Rachel. Bonjour. Right, little intimate chat while we're finding the place in the video. Rachel, what's it like watching yourself on video after all these years? It's like watching someone totally different. Right. On the video, I think I can't remember a thing. I didn't think that was me. I'm not sure that I actually went on blind date. I think it's a bit of a. I think it's a bit of a. Um, immediately after altered. the immediately after the event and for a few years, you found it very very uncomfortable. Painful. Watching it. Yeah, very painful. painful. Right. Now. now now it's like watching someone totally different. I, didn't, I don't have right. permed hair anymore. Right. You went to New York with the sky for the week. We're about to hear what you said to the viewing millions. Between, b before that, can we have a quick behind the scenes uh, little in, in look into what he it was really was like? He was lovely. He was a sweetie. He was a sweetie. Right. Now, did, did you? No, no. Did he, you? he tried to kiss me on the plane home, but I, I wasn't in for it. You were in New York for a whole week together? Four days. Four days. And he ended up. Come, he ended up. He ended up having that. sex with the girl that Orhan picked on the second half. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. But not with you. No. Did you not fancy him? Oh, I haven't got the bits. Was the film crew watching the whole time? They were. They were. But I haven't got the bits anyway. Still I've got nothing. I've got nothing. I've got. I'm just absolutely nothing. No pubic hair. Nothing. I couldn't do anything. Could have wanted to. Right. I'm surprised by all that. Uh, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps we oh, should honestly, stop. I'll, I'll rewind it. I'll rewind I mean, it. Perhaps we ought to stop the tape and discuss this further, <laughs> if you feel you need to. Do you feel that having nothing has held you back over the years? Here you go. Uh, no. It's been a bit of an advantage, actually. Right. Okay. Especially when John King. Hello, came France. In. Hello, France. John King later. But now we go back to Silla Black and Blind Date. Yes! Both our couples, Rachel and Ken, and Debbie and Orhan, that's a lovely name, Orhan, they picked the same date. And what a date it was. It was a trip to New York.
stand there. But there's already Mark. <laughs> Have you ever been on a double date before? No, no. Oh, no. Well, you're going to tell us all about it. And first of all, you're going to be in the hot seat because, yes, we saw those lovely pictures. And now we're going to see what you really thought about each other. I wouldn't say she was stunningly beautiful. Uh, but that was something I was glad of because I, I think I'd have felt a bit insecure if she was. What's peculiar is his looks totally belie his personality. I mean, he looks really punkish, but he's actually so square. I mean, when I first talked to him, he think he'd been out till after 12 the night before. So I thought, oh, that's <laughs> daring. <laughs> I this large suitcase um, because I've got quite a few different outfits. I didn't know which one I wanted to wear. He had a massive great suitcase, but he didn't seem to have the white clothes. When it was cold, he'd wear very little, and when it was hot, he'd wear loads and loads and tend to have to take it off. It rather surprised me that the magazines she bought were the really thick fashion magazines such as Elle and Vogue and things like that, which for somebody who dressed the way she did, <laughs> frankly, was quite out of character. He was very friendly and open towards people. It was always him that volunteered to ask people the way or to, um, to talk to people. She wouldn't let me photograph her in profile. Um, she has got quite a large nose. <laughs> the absolute tragedy of our time in New York was that he bought the wrong plug for his hairdryer. <laughs> so the whole time, because he hadn't been able to dry his hair, he'd be fluffing with it and making sure it was, you know, standing up all right. I found Rachel witty, charming, very good fun to be with. On the whole, he was absolutely brilliant. We had a really good time and he was great fun to go away with. And I hope we'd certainly keep in touch. I don't know, actually, because his hair stood up perfectly well without it. I mean, we were actually caught in a torrential downpour of rain, and we all looked drowned. Absolutely, you know, we'd just been in, in a flood, but his hair was standing up as perfectly well. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened to it at all. Trade secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it just nerves? <laughs> Oh, God, yeah. I mean, when, when we were... Yeah. He, he, he didn't know whether he was coming or going when we got back. No, I mean... He kept having to tell him the right way to go, because yeah. he, he was like a zombie. My, He'd wander up all over the place. My eyes were very patriotic, though, like red, white and blue. <laughs> <laughs> I, woke up, I woke up on the plane the next morning. Well, I mean, the sort of time difference and that. We were only on the plane for a short time, but it seemed like hours. Yeah. And um, I just couldn't say anything to anyone. I was like a zombie. <laughs> The company on the flight home then, was he? What did you do all the way home oh, well, with him asleep? Well, he fell asleep and um, me and Orhan got an invitation to go up to the cockpit. So we went up, but he didn't know anything about it because he's asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job. Like, <laughs> it's a pilot might have thought going to hijack a plane with her. But all in all, you really enjoyed oh, it. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel and Ken. I'm glad Stop, Mark. Right, Mark, the inside info on part two. All Hannah's been away with Debbie and they got on really well, but he didn't fancy her. But he wasn't going to say that. But they have a psychologist working on you before you um, actually go on and say what you thought about someone privately. Um, so you'll see the result in a minute. And to you, when you were interviewed separately. All I remember saying is, I don't remember much of it, but was how bubbly and how how much of a big smile she had. I thought, wow, nice body. I hope his personality matches up to it. <laughs> it was very sweet after that. Um, and he did actually call me Cherub, which I found quite surprising. Until I heard him speaking to somebody else and he actually called Ben Cherub as well and I realised he calls everybody Cherub. <laughs> I, I think uh, she actually wanted to hear more about me than I did of her, I might have to admit. But then again, I'm a great talker, great. I asked him to tell me about himself, and he just talked non-stop. He, he flitted over my life in about 30 seconds, and he was busy talking about himself. I think it normally is a woman's place, I and mean, to be walking at least 10 paces behind, and uh, they're not normally involved. Very stupidly, I'd taken high heels with me to wear in New York. So my feet were killing me and I wasn't able to keep up with, up with them, I really wasn't. I thought, well, get one to wear high heel shoes, let her wear high heel shoes on. Let her suffer if she wants to get them. He was 
but actually at one point very nice, turned around and asked if I was okay and asked if we could walk a little bit slower. Um, and I thought that was very nice. He kept complaining he had a, he had a bad back. Um, I was a bit groany about that. You should be very sympathetic about my bad back. You were asking how I was and what I was doing. And I, 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 up to then I didn't said anything about a feet or anything. I was totally not committed to what happened. We went skating. Um, in the Rockefeller Plaza and he's very, very conscious about a macho image. He really has to live up to this thing. And it was a little bit unfortunate. He didn't really get the hang of ice skating. I think I would have rather spent some time in New York on my own, just first couple of days, get used to it, see the sights, get to know it a little bit, get orientated. Um, and then maybe she could have found out a couple of days after that and then boo them. <laughs> I would have had that slight edge on that, wouldn't I? I think he's, he's quite self-centred. I think um, he's rather more in love with himself than anybody else, quite honestly. I would have loved if I had a dream. business about, I mean, women should walk ten paces at least behind you. I mean, what, um, what makes you God's gift to women then? I don't know. I think she's just asked the women that, really. It's <laughs> <laughs> not worth it. It's not worth it. <laughs> Well, no, it's because, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, they accept where they should be. <laughs> I mean, it was her. She was lucky to be chosen, let's be honest. <laughs> so I thought, well, if she's been chosen, I will go out there and she'll do what she wants to do. And I suppose that having me in the background, or maybe me in the forefront, it makes her day anyway, so... <laughs> At the end of it all, Debbie, you did really quite like him, didn't you? Yes, I think so. What was it, apart from all the horrible bits, what was it you really liked about him? Oh, he's quite cuddly. He's got a nice smile. <laughs> <laughs> and you like that? You like being dominated? Well, well no, not too much. <laughs> Hello, France. Hello, France. Hello, France. We're going to pull you away from this. You can still hear it in the background. But now we're going to centre... Centre main line, centre stage, conversation in the background here. Don't try and press the off <laughs> button. Right, Rach. No. Yes. No. Inside information. No. You come, you come back from your week away, mm -hmm. your week away with your chosen guy. Mm -hmm. You come back and you have to record all these bits to, to camera. Do they try and wind you up into um, s s saying what you wouldn't otherwise say? Or how, how do they psych you up beforehand? Well, that's what I was saying to Mark earlier when you were in the toilet. I've told him, haven't I? Have you? Yeah. Oh. I'm, well, not, I'm not going through it again. Well, if you weren't here to hear it the first time, I'm not I'm sorry, I was in the toilet. Right. The line I'd like to now pursue with you... Yeah, we, go on. How do you think Silver Black's dressed on this particular episode? Very, very badly. Yeah. I think the I Love New York bag. Oh, Ham was a bit shaken after this. Yeah, he, 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 looks, he looks a bit churned up. Yeah, he was a bit shaken. All the women were booing him in the audience. Really? Yeah. What, what, why do you think that was? Because he was a male chevron's pig, I think. Yeah. That's crap. Silver okay. Black really does look awful. Very, very bad. Yeah. There you go. That was different. So, w when you were saying earlier, they, they make this program in different stages. The whole program that you watch, that's all recorded on the same night, sure. Yeah, it? yeah, that's right. right. But right at the end of it, they fitted us in with loads of other people. Right. From other programs. Okay. Now, just to look a quick look behind the view, behind the scenes for the, for the listeners out in France. <laughs> Hello, France. Hello, France. Bonjour. Silla Black. Uh, best pract practice your French. Who paid for it? That's what I say. Go on. Silla Black as a person. How did she come across? She was very, very crap. Really? Uh, very, oh. very bad. I'm surprised to hear that. Yeah, very, 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 very bad. In, in what way? Can you illustrate that? Oh. Right. You'd meet her for the first time, shake hands, or would, yeah. she, would she look at you, or would you look at her? Um. You're a p prospective celebrity, or, you know, prospective um, candidate for... Um, 
for blind date. She'd look at you. No, the first time you ever see her is when you actually come on because she likes the spontaneity. Really? Yeah. That's so until then, it's just been advisors that's and right, researchers. That's right. You meet a husband every now and again. Bobby. Bobby. And agent. Husband and agent. That's right. You meet him. He's very, very, very fat. Agent provocateur. <laughs> Very, very fat. Very, very fat. They sort of bounce off each other, then. Yeah, because she's very, very bad, and he's very, very fat. Didn't hear him talk, actually, yeah. very much. I think maybe that was that was all he was, very, very fat. He, I, I, I thought you were going to say he was very, very good, and she was very, very bad. No, no, yeah. he was just very, very fat. And she's very, very bad. Very, very bad. She, but she's been a star. She's been a singer, it's sad, a television but don't personality don't you think it's rather for sad? years. But don't you think it's rather sad? What, why is she so crap? Can well, I mean, the Conservatives have been in power for, what, over ten years now? I don't know. I think it's part and parcel of the same phenomena. For, for the listeners in France, can you just illustrate why why she is so crap? We, we, we want a little detail on that. Can you flesh that one out? Yeah. It's not body odor. <laughs> no, I don't know. Imagine someone, imagine someone who's really, really crap. Yeah. And then she's just very, very whatever you've imagined. Right. <laughs> the problem we've got here is we keep coming back to that same word, crap. And it's... Uh, p- pardon, Paul? Crap. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. What, what did you make of Scylla, Paul? She looks better now. Crap. <laughs> yes. OK, thank you. Um, right. Whereas I was, I think, and I don't think I'm being modest in this at all, it, very, very good. Uh, you, were, you were very good. You were, you, were, you were stunning. Paul, no. sweet. I'd just like to say, I've not seen that video before. Paul, have you seen that video before? Probably seen it on television, but... Don't really not that particular it. episode, though. Probably, but I don't vaguely really remember it. Because yeah. you, you've, you've never met Rachel before this evening. What were your first impressions this evening on meeting Rachel? We, we're going we're to we're spookily move, move gear here. We're changing gear momentarily. We'll, we'll be dropping back to the other gear. Very bubbly, very... Is this Scylla or Rachel? Rachel. Or Steve? <laughs> Rachel! Very bubbly, very welcoming. Yeah? Doesn't give a toss. <laughs> Likes to get on with everybody, I hope. <laughs> otherwise, I'm sleeping in the, otherwise I'm sleeping in the front garden. <laughs> if you haven't got one, you're alright. On the steps. Oh. <laughs> that, Rob. Perhaps we'll come back to France about the sleeping arrangements. Um, yes, perhaps. <laughs> but... Very nice person. Really? I really like her. Yeah, that's, that's, that's glowing praise. <laughs> that's right. Glowing praise there. That's right. And and just 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 a little little outshoot on this conversation. Nick Christodoulou in one word. Crap. Drunk. <laughs> Crap and drunk. <laughs> right. Okay. That, that sort of fills it in. Right. Moving back over here onto the left. Rachel. Rachel. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm all a bit moved. I'm all a bit. I'm all a bit flushed. And I'm all a bit moved. Okay. Right. There's no rush. Right. Take your time. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm take it. Relax. Okay. Re- right. Drinking coffee cup coming yeah, up. Yeah. I'm fine. I know where I am. Where oh. am I? <laughs> You're in Tufnell Park. Oh yeah. And we we've got a hotline to France. Right. Yeah. That's Hello, right. France. Hello, France. Bonjour. Think, do you think Mark and Kathy are still with us? <laughs> oh, I'd have to say probably not at the moment. It'd be nice if they were. Probably not. Oh, I doubt it, though. I mean, it's not often we make a live broadcast. I think France. maybe if they listen yeah. to ten minutes every day, it'd be like the Archers, and they might stay with us. But if they try for the whole lot at once, it's not going to work. I'll tell you what, rather than just rambling on, we could discuss what's been happening in your life lately, or my life, or... Yeah, Bob's life. Right, my life. Um... Bob, what's been happening in your life? Right. I've had a few days off work this week. Um, it's not quite nice, actually, because I'm thinking of giving up work perma- on a permanent basis. Woo! Um, had, had, a, had the week off work, hoping to do some decorating. Haven't done any of it. And I can't say any of us are surprised, Mark. Been, been, I don't think so. Been catching up on a bit of psychology homework. Um... How's it going, your psychology? Oh, we're into the second year now, and uh, we go along every Tuesday night, and uh, yeah, it's coming. Are you, on. are you up? Are you up with the work and stuff? Fallen a bit behind hand, but getting up, getting good, up, good, getting good. up. How about you? Fine, an awful lot of work this year. Actually, second, it's the second year of medicine. Second year, second year, awful lot of work, phenomenal amount of work. I'm in every day from nine o'clock, um, mm-hmm. from nine o'clock to about four every day. Mm-hmm. And do you know how many lectures Steve's got? Do you know how few, many lectures? Few. Eight. Eight one-hour lectures. That's eight hours a week. People get once, you know, eight hours. That means he's got Tuesday and Wednesday off, totally no, off. That's virtually nothing, isn't it? No, no, that's, it's, it's all rather sad. And you know what? No. Taxpayers are paying for him to go to really? college for eight hours. I'm, a, I'm outraged by that. Outraged. Whereas I'm getting paid less than him to go to college for almost nine till five every day. God. God. I know. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's shocking. Fair. It's shocking. No. It is shocking. It's more. It's more. It's more than shocking. I'm sure Mark and Cathy are more than glad they're not sole taxpayers yeah. in this country. I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. If I was them, I'd be celebrating. Yeah. Mm. Get the champagne out. Get it out. Lager. Turn Malibu and pineapple. Get it out. Do a few cartwheels. Yeah. Celebrate. Yeah. What were they celebrating? What are they celebrating? Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Let's move on. Uh, birthdays, anniversaries. Birthdays. Birth- happy birthday births, to you. Deaths. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Jesus. Fill in your own name. Jesus, because it's Christmas soon. And that's his birthday. <laughs> well, that's lovely. In a really caring, sharing it kind of really way. Nice. That's really nice. That's lovely. That's it lovely. Is. That's nice. Um, happy birthday to you. To both of you. Both of you. Because we hear it'll... If it'll every day is your birthday, if you no, think of it in a positive way. Not no? every day. Yes, yeah, But almost. in the next year, they'll both be having birthdays, <laughs> we've heard. true. And they can play this whenever. Yes. Other people's birth... Pope's birthday. They can play this to the Pope's birthday. On a more personal level, what though... Is the Pope's birthday? Are you feeling sexually fulfilled these days? Since I haven't got any bits... I don't... Sexual film uh, is a concept. I'm right, the operation. Have, outside have, of. Have Mark and Cathy been updated on the operation? No, the other foot's grown back really nicely, actually. But where the bits used to be, you've now got a third <laughs> foot. It works well, though. They might it find that. It works well. They might, I can, I they can might find it. They along might. the pavement really quickly. Cram, cramp like. I used to get horizontal. Cramp like. Horizontal, scuttle, or scuttle along the pavement. Quicker to get to the top of your park tavern. Oh... How can, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Paul. She was doing the can can coming back. Yes, That's thank you. That's their imagination because they're both drunk. They don't know. They don't know. They don't understand. They're probably not drunk. They don't understand. They're both sad. They both don't understand. They're not sad. They're they're not sad. They're they imagine things. They're I sad. I was talking to Mark Veazey only today. He rang me at six minutes past six and In said. In the morning. No, this evening. <laughs> and he shouted and screamed and bellowed down the phone at me because he thought I hadn't written to him, and the fact is I have. I believe you. It was posted on Monday, and if he's not got it because of a postal soul strike or the fact that somebody's hiding his letters... So, so when he gets your letter, it's going to be really doted, then? And you've talked to him about all the things you put in your letter. No, it's a, really, it's a really Fucking nice letter. That. It's a really, really nice letter. And at least some of us can, <laughs> can put pen to paper without <laughs> making a fool of ourselves, Rachel. <laughs> Pregnant pause. Yeah. <laughs> Yahoo. It seems. Where's Steve gone? I He's think gone to bed. Right. He's I gone. think he passed away. Mark. Mark. He passed away about fifteen minutes. How would you? Ago. How would you fancy? How would you fancy if the roving reporter enters Steve's how bedroom would you? No, and, ent- and enters no, Steve's no, bed? No, no, no. We could enter. No, Rachel. No, Rachel. No, no. We could enter Steve's bed. No. In the pri- you know, it wouldn't be the best thing to do, I don't think. She, she's oh, look, hyperventilating. It would be such a horrible mess. She's hyperventilating. No, it, no. no but it's, I've seen it done before. No, I have roving, seen it before. Roving and reporter. I really wish I hadn't. Roving reporter, we could just, we could just ease our way, <laughs> ooze, ooze our way, ooze our way through that door and into his very bed, live to France. Hello, France. We could. Bonjour, Francaise. It's like it's a knockout. If I got a few obstacles, a few milk bottles, and we could have a go. It's, it's a knockout in Steve's bed. That's it. Rach, Rach, maybe, maybe Steve yes, wouldn't like me entering his room, but, but you and Mark could enter his room. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, I think, I think I'll stay could. with you two, actually. Yeah, but we'll be up to all, all sorts of unmentionable things. Uh. <laughs> well, we weren't last night, but... <laughs> I didn't try. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't try this morning. Well, look, if you feel overcome, we've got a copy of the Bible up there, OK? Just so leaf through a few pages. OK, I'll point you out the relevant bits. OK, let's just beat, beat the daylights no, out of this not, one. No, stop. Have you anything outrageous to claim? Go on, claim something say outrageous. It. Go on, oh, say it. Oh, I'm straight. <laughs> right, okay. Oh, no! Right. Oh, God. 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 I've, I've been seeing somebody who's straight. <laughs> God, it's not good now. Don't don't try and, try and pretend otherwise. Oh, right, right. oh, get off! Right, Rachel, Rachel, your little it's cat, better. your little pussy that's here. It's sort of light brown in colour. It's, it's not unusual. Not light brown. Are you bloody colour blind? You're old. That's what it is. You can't see, can you? How many fingers am I holding up? How many fingers am I holding up? France. Can you please? How many fingers am I holding oh, up? Come on. One. 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 So old. So old. 
I was holding up a sheep. Can you see that? Are you mad? Yes. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know, Bob. OK, what colour is your cat? I, ref- I, ref- it's lilac. I refrain from using the word. It's a lilac cat. Yeah. It's called a Burmese lilac. It's not lilac, it's you bloody stupid lilac. tart. It's lilac. It's not bloody lilac. It might not look lilac to you. It's gone off crew. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it looks lilac. Okay. I think I think we're in danger. Merging on the grey. All right, it's lilac. Boring them. You think? I think we're in danger. We're seconds later now. The tape ran out. We've turned it over. But, but the news is we can't carry on much longer. Mark, hello, France. Um, right, Rachel's now walked out of the room. We are at the time of about midnight on Thursday the 14th. Could be well, could well be Friday the 15th of October 1993. There's, there's bedding coming in. There's Rachel walking up and down. <laughs> Looking totally surprised. Right. What, what we're going to have to do now, we're, we're going to have to start bidding you farewell soon, France. Um, we, we're just on I'll the following. I'll see you the same, France. Right, Rachel. Play for your France. Rachel. Rachel. Right, play for are your you French use Right, it. just carry on about your duties. You're in the kitchen now. What are you actually doing? You're sorting well, out bedding I've, for people. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to do the cats, do the cat we, food. No, well, my, carry on. My job carry on. Is do it, do it. We'll, we'll interview as you, you, you're doing it. Uh, I can't. No, she's just can't. She can't. <laughs> lose a couple of pounds I, think. Right. I can't be bothered not going to bother really? to cat. <laughs> clean the floor I can't really be bothered to do that either really? no I can't be bothered to do that mm. uh, close the curtains brush your I teeth. can't be no that, that's Jib that's Jib's job visit, visit the toilet <laughs> that's Steve's job my teeth I'm afraid the to- toilet they're in it? a jar in the bedroom at the moment <laughs> I bet he's forgotten right. be the third time this week right so you're, you're just going to go to bed in a minute I think I better right I think I better over in France Mark and Cathy I hear things are good over there. They're enjoying life. Is They're um, detached from is the it real wet? world. Is it wet in France? It's wet in England. It's very, very wet. We didn't discuss the weather. It's wet as much as Scylla is crap. Mm. I think it's just very, very... Scylla is crap. Very... You never very. you never really did explain why she was crap. Lack of mental intelli- intelligence. <laughs> or something. Uh, did, did she ever... Did she ever, off-camera, talk to you as a, as a human being to another human being? Did she ever uh, talk to you, hello, how are you, sort of thing? No. No? Uh, it was like... I'm a star in your shit. Well, she wouldn't, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and there you go. You, I've had a bit of a conversational crisis yeah, at the moment. you look embarrassed. The words are there that. in my head, but they just don't come out at all. Right, OK, I don't want to pressurise you. OK. Um, so you do. I feel a bit uncomfortable. We're in the kitchen. I feel a bit uncomfortable in the kitchen. Can we move out into the hall right. a bit? So what are the little things you've got to Ooh. do before you go to bed Ooh, tonight? Oh, that's nice. I think I've got to go to the toilet. Right. Can we t- can we take the microphone in there with you? Well, right. First thing, I'll make your bed. Right. Well, let's follow you doing that. Right. We're moving back into the living room, and she's uh, bending down. She's bending down, tidying things up, moving, moving things around, moving pillows, cushions. Cushions coming off the settee now to make up a bed, and uh, that's nice. That's nice. That's lovely. Now, Rachel, can you talk? Now, can you talk while you work? Single or double? Uh, how how do you take it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got the single works out really well. It's slightly larger than a, a strictly a, a standard single. Right. It's all now keep working while you talk. <laughs> it's mid single and double. There you go. It's nice. Good width, I think. It's crap width. <laughs> but you can have a bit more length if you want. <laughs> more, more width might be. Uh, how about a bit more width? Yeah. She's bol- she's bolting wings onto the side, but unfortunately it's more width halfway down halfway down the length of the bed, but precious little more maybe, width. Maybe maybe give Mark a snatch of the bedtime listening. Music. Right. Yeah. It's nice though, it's stirring. Perhaps we should end on that. Perhaps we should end on that. Perhaps we should bid our farewell to France because Lines are expensive. Um, <laughs> should, we, should we just run into the bedroom for a quick good night from Steve? I don't think so. Right, on behalf of Steve, Rachel will now say good night from Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. This is 118 Tufnell Park Road, London. And... Uh, you leave us shortly. It's been an entertaining evening. We hope we hope you've enjoyed your stay here. 
Don't forget, if you'd like to reply, if you'd like to reply, the address is Rachel and Steve Gibbons, Keensham, K E Y N S H A. No, no, that's been updated. It's Rachel and Steve Gibbons, 118 Tufnell Park Road, London, N7. O D U. That's London N7 O D U. <laughs> Steve said good night. A final word from Paul, who's uh, fairly bemused by the whole evening, I should think. Paul, how's it been for you? Oh, totally. Um, well, oh. flabbergasted. Seeing somebody that's been on blind date. Definitely. Sort of De- talking to famous. Mark in talking to Mark in France. A famous person. We've got a star, a Miss Star um, Mids. Yes, I'd say so. I'd Very say nice so. of her to let us. I can go through it again live. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, number one, Sunday afternoons. Very nice time, relaxing. What do you do on a Sunday afternoon? Go back to bed and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been working well, on that first. Well, you wouldn't have got very far. No. And the conversation will, will no, no doubt go on really into the night. <laughs> but finally, finally, France, a very, very special good night from Rachel. We're we going into the bath. Is this the bath? No, it's not the bathroom, the bedroom. Good night. You going into your bedroom now? Uh, Where are you going in? Yeah. Right. Okay. A lump. Final good night. This is going to be the end. Mark, it's good night from Tufnell Park Road. And good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Steve <laughs> said, "Good night." <laughs> And in order to get that, you must be too much to handle. It's mode 7 rip rotation and bone crush.